Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, once again, um, this is for Roll20 Con. Um, we're so excited to be out here doing what we can for the stream. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. Obviously, we got Roll20 Con 2020, three days of gaming for charity. I'm Masood. I'll be your tour guide, narrator, and GM for our game, Balak Bayan Returning Home. Uh, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about myself and the game, but first, I want to talk about my cast here. We are all uh, members of Stir Friday Night, uh, America's oldest all-Asian theater and comedy troupe. We've been around for over 25 years, performing primarily in Chicago, but all over the U.S. as well. Our notable alumni include Danny Pudi from Community, AP Bio's Mary Sohn, and The Walking Dead's very own Stephen Yoon. What a heartthrob. Um, I'm joined by six of our awesome group. I'm so excited to have y'all here and to be able to play this game with y'all. Uh, let's go around and introduce yourself and what you do, um, what you're excited about for a game, and what was the last thing of content you consumed that made you feel a real visceral emotion. That's the list. I'm going to throw it to Ben. Take it away. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Ben Cummings. Yeah. Uh, he, him, his. Uh, what am I supposed to answer the question? You're, uh, let me give you a list real quick. Uh, you got your name. That's the first one. Uh, okay. wh like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a comedian. That's You're right. Comedian. I improvise. Uh, uh, before the pandemic happened, I was uh, improvising and performing comedy all throughout Chicago at the Annoyance, the IO Theater, and the Second City. And uh, that all came to a grinding halt. Now I audition for commercials. Uh, <laughs> the last piece of entertainment that I consumed that really affected me yeah. was uh, I just reread that entire comic book series, Invincible. Ooh, uh, very cool. I think it's 144 issues. Wow. It's good. Yeah. Read it. Nice uh, <laughs> beginning, middle, and end. So highly recommend it. Stamp of approval from Ben Cummings. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, speaking of things that we like and are excited about, uh, what are you looking forward to with this game? What are you uh, pumped about for it? Um, I'm really excited to play a tabletop RPG with my comedy friends because I've played them in the past with my gaming friends. Uh -huh. But the worlds don't meet that much. And, they don't. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little sad. It's easy to get into a conversation yeah. like, we should play D&D &D sometime. It's harder to actually get people to do it. But now you're obligated. You yeah. have a stream, so yeah. you have to do it. That's going to be fun. I mean, Ben, we literally had that conversation multiple times. It was like, oh, yeah, hundreds well, of yeah, times. Hundreds yeah. of times. Uh, and it took me getting a contract in front of you to make it happen. But we're here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Erica, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, what do you do? Um, what are you excited about for the game? And the last piece of content that really made you feel something. Yeah, so my name is Erica Geyser. She, her, hers. Um, same story as Ben. Before this, I was doing comedy all over Chicago. Now I'm doing it sometimes on the internet. Um, I don't really know what to plug for myself, so just follow me on Instagram and you'll see it. <laughs> or don't follow me, <laughs> just don't. Um, and then the last piece of media I consumed that made me feel something was the final episode of the new season of 1015. Oh, snap. The whole episode is an emotional roller coaster. Please, but I have then not there's seen this it. one moment at the end that just brought me to tears. I have not seen it. I mean, you should watch it. I will it's watch beautiful. it. I'm sorry to be that the person. The writing is <laughs> Hell the yeah. The whole world is mwah. It's an excellent show. I love it so much. And that's the first time I cried in a while. So Hell yeah. felt good. That's a nice feeling. Um, yeah. So what are you excited um, about for the game? For the game? Oh, I'm just, just excited to like have a character mm -hmm. um, and build a world and yeah. be silly and weird. Yeah. And we're going to be able to do all that and when we get yeah. to it. Uh, Harrison, you're up next. Hi, I'm Harrison Happen, he, him, his. Uh, before this, uh, I was uh, an actor, an improviser. Uh, now I'm, I'm nothing, but um, I'm, what, what's the next question again? <laughs> what, uh, you, you answer what you do. Um, tell yep. me what you're excited about for this game. Um, and oh, then what's yeah. the last bit of content that really made you feel something? Sure. The last bit of content um, that I've consumed, uh, I found out that on my Switch there was Dragon Warrior 3. It was like a game that I played like as a kid, and it was uh, I played it before Final Fantasy and yeah. just killing slimes and knights, and it just it made me feel like a kid. Yeah. And uh, I'm obsessed with it, and I can't wait to play it after this. But uh, something I'm excited about this game yeah. is that um, 
uh, I could play a game that's about Filipino folklore and uh, I'm Filipino and it's uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for that. We're really pumped to play it and yeah. we're really grateful to have you here. Um, I know for a lot of this sure. and I don't mean to put this on you, but we might ask sure. you for correct pronunciations on stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, oh, that's on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> that's on the spot. I know that might be a lot. <laughs> We're gonna lead with our best intentions, and also, folks, uh, if you uh, want to tell us how to correctly pronounce any of this stuff, please DM me. Let me know. Um, it's good because we're gonna be not only playing this tonight, but we'll be playing it every Wednesday night moving forward um, for the foreseeable season. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Up next, Asra, tell us a little about yourself. Hi, I'm Asra Khan, she, her, hers. Um, before this, like everyone else, I was a comedian. Now I sit at home and wait. Um, <laughs> something that, uh, oh, a piece of media that really affected me was the David David Attenborough documentary, A Life on Our Planet. Oh, yeah. It's really good oh. and it, convinced me to finally go vegetarian, which is something I've been thinking about for years. And I was like, just David Attenborough said it, so I gotta do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, and something I'm excited about with this game is to understand it because <laughs> I read the play kit um, and I'm still really confused. And yeah, yeah. I read the, I think once we get into it, I'll understand it, but as of right now, I don't really know what's going on, so no. I'm excited to get into it. <laughs> I vibe that. This game is it's it's different in in a lot of ways, which also makes it fun for people who might be new to the uh, like tabletop community or veterans of the like. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be about group storytelling, and uh, wouldn't want to do it without y'all, anyways. Um, speaking of which, Shu, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Shu. Pronounced like the shoes that probably nobody is wearing right now. Um, she, hers. Correct. And uh, like everybody else, I used to perform on stage. Um, and I, uh, you know, I'm a writer, actress, improviser, comedian, person who watches too much TV. Um, I think the a piece of media that really moved me recently was um, I finally watched uh, Over the Garden Wall. Oh, nice. And it's just like really, it's like my favorite type of media, which is like something that's like really cute, but also really creepy and like a little scary. Um, and there's some like really, really moving parts and it's done almost kind of like, um, like old school animation, yeah. um, you know, kind of before everything became like Pixar or, or whatever, which is beautiful on its own. It's just like, it's really lovely. Um, if and you're looking for something like, like that. A, it's a contained series, right? It's like, yes, it's not like 8,000 Naruto episodes. Right, 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 right. It's like, you can literally sit in a night and, or two and like watch it. And it's like perfect it's for a, like Halloween. Yeah. 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 Um, what that's else? a good oh, recommendation. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely watch it if you haven't. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'm really excited about playing this game is, um, you know, I played a little D&D before, um, and this is so different than anything I think I've seen um, in terms of just like the campaigns or, or whatever it is. So I'm really excited to try and uh, feel it out. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to do it with some of my friends and some of my yeah. enemies. <laughs> okay. And with that devastating turn, Joan Moon, please. Tell us who you are. I, Joan Moon, she, her, hers. Um, before the pandemic, just like everyone else, I did improvisation. Um, I watch a lot of TV as well. <laughs> I work from home. And during this pandemic, I got really into K-pop. And the piece of content that really affected me was this reality show called Island. And it's about like a bunch of kids, uh, young boys, like 15 to like 20, trying to compete into like becoming the ultimate K-pop group oh, and be under like BTS's label. And so through the process, you see boys crying and just getting very em viscerally emotional because this is like their chance to break into being like a future star. So there's like so much on the line and I got really into it. Is that why you watch it? To watch men cry? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, I'm not shaming. Like I like, I respect it. Like if anything, I'm like, yes, okay. But it's like a huge emotional connection you get because yeah. like you're watching people's dreams come, tr come true yeah, okay. as well as like people's like dreams crashing. So yeah. there's like so much on the line and I really got into it. Hell I recommend it. Island. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, tell us what you're excited about for this game. Um, I haven't ever played D&D, &D, so I'm super excited to like create this whole world with, you know, 
our friends of Stir Friday Night. Yeah. And I just am super excited to be in this like cyber post-apocalyptic world as well. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm pumped as well. Um, and just for y'all who don't know, hi, I'm Masood Huck. Uh, I'm a member of Rivals of Waterdeep and Indoor Recess, a comedian, actor, tabletop role-playing game enthusiast, uh, and an obnoxious cat dad. We're going to be playing Bollock Bayan Returning home um and i'm gonna tell you a little about it in a moment but first i gotta i gotta give a shout out to roll 20 and roll 20 con uh thank you all so much for putting this show together for supporting us um and also organizing this great convention that's happening over the next three days um if you don't know about it all of this is being done for charity it's all being done for the code 2040 charity roll 20 will be matching every dollar donated up to fifty thousand dollars if you give a dollar we give a dollar The Code 2040 mission is to activate, connect, and mobilize the largest racial equity community in tech to dismantle the structural barriers that prevent the full participation and leadership of Black and Latinx and people of color in the innovative, in the the innovation economy. At Roll20, they know that a more diverse party is better equipped to handle any and all incoming obstacles, and they know that making room for everybody at the table isn't just good for games, it's the right thing to do. Um, their flagship fellows program that has placed internships at top tech companies, Code 2040, works to support them in being equally advocates and, and teaching them what it looks like to be uh, digitally organized. Um, they have an equal career accelerator program that ex- acts as an onboarding program to get new employees integrated into new teams, break down barriers into the tenure. Um, they do so much work consulting with tech companies to help address biases and fix equity problems with themselves. If you haven't yet, please feel free to donate throughout our stream. There's going to be uh, codes in the chat um, to help you throughout. The mods will be in there to give you any help and direction that you're looking for. Um, Also, there's going to be some giveaways that you can get into um, to help drive the code 2040 donations. There are a few different giveaways and exclusive merch for Roll20Con. Every stream will be giving away content. And these are the Tiltify rewards available um, for the Roll20 Present Show character art. So um, you get folks from the lost mind you can get some of their tokens in your games you can get folks from the burning daylights you can even get some of the cast of indoor recesses tokens so you might be able to play with your very own troilus antioch human centaur well just centaur paladin uh on tuesday <laughs> nights for roll 20 uh presents with the goddesses of theros so if you are look i'm very pumped about this it felt uh very cool but yeah you can go get one of those uh, it's really dope uh, you can also get your Roll20Con uh, 2020 t-shirt. Um, all t-shirt sales benefit uh, Code2040, uh, and you can find them on Teespring. You can see the link in the chat. And there's also a free Burn Bite adventure um, that's happening right now, Trapped at the Edge. Burn Bite is the exclusive tabletop role-playing game platform for uh, Roll20, and uh, they're releasing this free adventure. The burn is consuming everything in its path, but that's no reason to abandon hope. In a galaxy of magic, technology relies primarily upon plasma. Convenient space travel, instantaneous language translation, the generation of force fields, and more all rely on this precious resource. Face down both plasma ghosts and plasma pirates in this adventure, all while escaping the burn. Um, so feel free to get your free copy of that Burn Bite campaign um, right now. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Roll20, for all that you do. Um, and now, getting back to the content. We're playing Bollock Bayam, Returning Home. And at its core, this game is a narrative tabletop role-playing game, heavily inspired by Filipino mysticism and culture that gives everyone at the table uh, equal creative opportunities. Um, specifically, it's a story about elementals. That's what our cast are going to be playing. Beings of supernatural Filipino folklore come to life. Uh, Bollock Bayam takes place in the far future in a cyberpunk setting at the mercy of the Corp, which has enslaved the elementals through machinery and has become infused with magic over generations. Um, our cast will be playing a group of elementals um, and doing their best to escape the hands of the Corp. Um, they've now relocated back to Earth, escaping um, one of the colonies and are doing their best to uh, bring about the regeneration of magic to a planet that has lost it or end in misery as they're captured by their villainist uh, enemies, the corporation. Um, Balak Milan is about the marriage of technology and the arcane arts, using this combination to stay on the run, destroy the corp, and revive magic. The game uses a system utilizing no dice, 
but tokens that are earned based on plot choices, favoring narrative and relationship first in order to tell a great story. Um, and I'm just super pumped to play this game with you all. I was really um, stoked when I found out about it because it was, I, I don't know, um, I think cyberpunk is really cool right now. <laughs> I don't know. I really like the vibe, the genre, the setting. Um, and to find a game that was uh, created by someone and a team that was inspired by something not out of the Western mythos, out of the Western canon, I don't know. It was like super you know, it's exciting to me. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know about you all. You guys ready to get into the game a little bit? Yeah, dude. Let's yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right. So in the game itself, let's transition over to our Roll20 screen. As you can see, we're going to be using Roll20 for uh, all of our games and our features. Even though the game itself does not require any dice rolls, we can still do everything we need for the game right here in this great system. So um, one of the things that I would like you all to do is I believe you all have access to this document. Um, but can you do me a favor and go over to uh, over here on the top right? You uh, on the right, you've got these tabs. If you go over to the journal, you'll see I updated a bunch of documents for y'all to look through and like go into for the game. Um, I wanted you all. Let's pull up the play kit introduction. Okay. And this has um, seven paragraphs. And lo and behold, there are seven of us. So uh, starting from Usra, then moving to Ben and Eric, as you guys can see on the Twitch screen, we're going to go read, read a, a paragraph each of this. <laughs> I'll read the last one. Uh, so uh, you're, in, you're in the game, right, Harrison? Yes, I'm in the game right Perfect. now. So you move your mouse all the way to the right, and there's um, your side panel. One of the tabs, the yeah. middle one, the journal, you click on that. And then under, um, I created this sort of list of rules and resources, this Balak Bayan play kit introduction. All right. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? You got it? Everyone got it pulled oh, up? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Asra, if you would be so kind. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've been home. The last time we were here, Earth still had real trees and grass. Animals roamed in shrinking forests. The sky was blue, vast, and bright behind the wires. Half of the population hadn't been affected by natural disasters. The last time we were here, there were so more, many more of us. Elementals, beings made of the strange stuff between magic and nature, reality and fantasy, hope and fear, the supernatural. We inspired legends, myths, the stories humans told to scare one another into behaving. We were all of that. A long time ago, the humans built machines that could see us, sense us, and more importantly, contain us, enslave us. We were magic, we were power. We fueled their dreams, their desires. We reshaped reality for them. At first we did it out of love, but when the love faded, we realized we didn't have a choice. The freedom we had was long gone. And then Joan, do you want to go next? They they changed us, all of us, into something like a machine that dreams of magic. That's what we are now. Inside us is a string held tight on the verge of breaking between machine and magic. We escaped the colonies, banded together. We made it back home. The cost was high, but we made it home. The journey was perilous. Pre the journey demanded sacrifice, but we made it home. It had to be all worth it. But now our old masters are after us, and they refuse to let us go. They're willing to tear apart our home, what's left of it, to bring us back. But no, we're not going back. We're never going back. This is our home and we fight. We have to destroy them before they destroy us. We don't have any other choice. What will that destruction look like? We don't know, yet. Will we be able to outrun our masters and those who hunt us down? Can we use our magic to bring about the rebirth of the city and all elementals? Will this be our reckoning or our homecoming? That's what we play to find out. Um, I feel like that's a good setting to go into the next part of the game. So this is the vibe, that's the world that we're in. The really, the great thing um, that I love about uh, Balak Bayan is the entirety of it is 
group um, narrative design. And so the first thing that we need to do is we need to build the world. Before we can even figure out how we're interacting with it, we're going to build our city that all of our elementals escape to. So over here, we've got the map rules sort of picked up. I want us to pull this over and um, just take a look at this our document for yourselves. What we're going to do now is we're going to build the visuals for our city. What are the features that actually inhabit it itself? Um, sort of the real planting and the moments within it. Um, that give it structure and give it effect in its world. Um, and don't worry about this. This is what I'm here for. I'm going to be taking notes. So you guys don't have to worry about remembering any of this for a game. Uh, yeah. I'll be I'll be documenting <laughs> everything you guys say um, and keeping track of all that. Okay? Yeah, what a nice DM. The, hey, it's, it's, you. it's your tour guide and narrator. That's my goal. Um, <laughs> and so... To get us started, um, do, like feel free to take a look uh, over like a couple of these things, a couple of these vibes, um, and I, I'm gonna just go down the line. We're gonna go one by one. Think about a visual element or like give it a name, give it a little bit of specificity, and then uh, because the great thing about this game is that it requires community input, um, we are all actors and artists in our own way, and we're gonna try to draw those elements onto our map here in some <laughs> representative form. Um, but so first, let's go uh, down the line. Asura, if you'd be so kind, uh, tell us a little bit about our city. Um, well, actually, let's, let's first, uh, uh, this is to the group. I want to ask this before we jump in. Give you a moment to think. What is the name of our city? Can it be like an existing one? Or... Could be, it could be an existing one. It could be like okay. new, uh, new Manila. It could be like new Davao. Say that again. New Davao. New. New Davao. 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 That's an option. I was gonna say Neo Schomburg. Neo Schomburg. I like Neo. Like Neo cool. Davao. Neo Davao. Anyone who's watching who's not uh, never seen Chicago comedy, that's a that would be a huge laugh. That'd be that would kill absolutely. <laughs> you could always punch oh, down on laugh. the western suburbs. Um, uh, Neo Davao. Um, I like Chicago 2.0. Chicago 2.0. Mm. That's that's good. 2.0. Just B3. 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 Like B3. version three. I like that. Um, I was gonna say, uh, Happen City. Happen City. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's gotta be a cyberpunk world, so I was thinking, what else could describe a cesspool of human civilization, of bad choice making and a dirty deal happening, than Happen Chicago. City? Chicago! Oh, Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, JK, JK. Uh, mm. We got Neo Davo, Chicago 2.0, B3. 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 V3. It's V3. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. so I'm so sorry. I decided to just keep saying it uh, without helping. No, 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 no. You gotta say V <laughs> at, V as in Viagra. V as That's in, what I didn't yeah. say. Yeah, I was trying to be ultimately unhelpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think the oh. town should be a uh technology hub called circuit city yeah <laughs> oh like oh it. that that thing's not copyright yeah. anymore I, i'm gonna take it I, yeah. I, yeah, circuit, that's for anyone can do that now. circuit city baby <laughs> sorry you gen zers out there might not not it's it was a it's like a radio shack i don't know if you know what that was anymore but that's, yeah, even, that's even harder to, to, know. <laughs> to know 1996. my dog left because she was like these references are so old these are so old references <laughs> Uh, Radio Shack is like if a Pizza Hut and your computer had a baby. And, and you got, honestly, at a, a mall. They got everything they needed. It was right next to the Great Clips where I was growing up. We can't get in this. I'm not just talking about my life. Um, <laughs> what do we feel? So, right now, we got Circuit City, V3, Chicago 2.0, and Neo Davo. I'm going to, unless there's anything else, I think we close the suggestion pool and maybe vote. And let, like I'm, I want to give it, just give you all a moment as well. If there's anything else you want to add to our generator, we add a Kesson to Circuit City just to make it a Filipino. What, 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 can you say that one more time? Kesson Circuit City. No, no, no one's been to the Philippines. Is, just is, me. How do I spell it? Kesson City is a, the city in the Philippines. 
Oh, it has a oh. densely populated, yeah. Crescent Circuit That's, City. It's, it's fine. I, I, no, 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 I like it. Wait, beautiful uh, place. It just. <laughs> Okay. No, Circuit City's fine. Circuit City. Totally Circuit, City. Fine. Circuit City is fine. I do not want to disparage the name of this existing city in a way by associating it with this now destitute and no longer existing technology brand. <laughs> um, mm. Neo Davo, Chicago 2.0, V3, Circuit City. Should we? Wait, like, how are we just... voting? Are we just saying words? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Everyone, close your eyes. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the stream, um, and I'm gonna count. And and chat's gonna keep you honest. Um, shoo. Why is everyone covering oh, their eyes? Shoo. There. <laughs> okay. Uh, Why are we supposed to? Do we only vote once. Yeah. Yeah. Only vote once. Only vote once. <laughs> once again, I'm gonna read out all the options, and then we'll commence voting. Neo Davo, Chicago 2.0, V3, Circuit City. Raise your hand, Neo Davo. Okay, noted. Chicago 2.0. Cool. V3. Nice. Circuit City. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think Circuit City uh, took it by one, which was, it was very close. Uh, but you, you didn't even vote for your own choice then. How do you know? I didn't vote for it. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> I have little birds that whisper to me through my eyes. It's a, her hands are open. It's cool. <laughs> it's, it's cool. We just loved you guys. That's all. <laughs> uh, oh, we should have let the chat vote. That's a good idea. Next time, next time we have a decision, we'll we'll throw it to the chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah. like Circuit City. Cir yeah. Circuit City seemed to go pretty well though. Um, uh, I think we should let the chat decide. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not satisfied with it. So, uh, chat, what do you Get think? Get out of here. We need to recount. What was the number two? What was the runner up? The number of the runner up was V3. I was just curious. Continue. Yes, My sir. name was the best one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways, uh, so our name of our city is Circuit City. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. It's good. Uh, hit me, Asro. What is a visual element of Circuit City? You, you, you see. I'll um for the while well, you think about it. If if you have one ready, feel free to go. And I was just gonna read a little bit for the chat for the map rules, just so they know. Uh, okay. Some of the visuals of the city could be a bustling market, a clogged skyway, continuous broadcast, crushed satellites, uh, decaying evidence. There's there's a lot of things. What just like are the components and elements that make up our home. Okay. okay. I don't know if this fits, but I, I see like um, a waterfall, but it's like acid. Oh, heck yeah. An acid cool. waterfall. Do you think it's like, it's gotta be like toxic runoff, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like maybe a corp, like a facility that's like the headquarters of Circuit City, like that's, Oh, I love this. We can set dynamics of like class, like people who are wealthy live at the top and the people Ooh. who are like poor in the lower class live like near the acid. Like, this is good. An acid waterfall. Cool. Acid waterfall. I love this. Um, Usra, now, the second element, the taxing element. Draw this acid waterfall onto our map. Okay. <laughs> This is so exciting. Uh, feel free. And while while you're doing that, Ben, hit me. What's a what's a, a visual you want to add to our city? Um, I think that Circuit City used to be a port town where there were still fish in the ocean, uh -huh. and there should be a huge like statue of a fish that is like a meeting point in the city. That's like a tourist attraction because no one like sees fish anymore because they don't exist. Yeah. Anymore. No, that's very true. Everyone, like eat some nutrient yeah. pastes. They eat soylent all day. <laughs> <laughs> what type of uh, is it? Like just a fish? Does anyone even know the type of fish it is? You know what? It's tilapia. It's it's a it's tilapia? tilapia. We'll look it up. I'm a, I might look up what are some indigenous <laughs> fish of the uh, Filipino region, and I might add a little flavor to this. Uh, but in the meantime, it's a port town. It's a statue of a fish. 
Um, Tor Strap. Bangos. Say what? Bangos. Bangos? Yeah, B-A-N-G-U-S. B-A-N-G-U-S. Like Bangos? Yeah. Oh, it's a milkfish. Ooh, perfect. It's, it's d- delicious hey. fried. Okay. I've not eaten this. There's a fish I really like, but I need to remember what it is right now. So I'm... Think about it. Think about it. Lock it in. <laughs> give a text There's so many mom. fish. There's so many fish. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the Wikipedia fish. There's even, you know what's scary? There's oh, more fish, fish we don't know about than fish we do know about. Can we Sorry. think about that for a moment? Think about how yeah. most of the water, it, most about. of the water in the world is unexplored. That's terrifying. Sorry. I just think it's a uh, it's a little bit suspect that uh, NASA Blind spends fish. so much time trying to like look at the moon, yeah. and spends no time looking at the ocean. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. that's <laughs> oh most of the time oh anyway. heck yeah, Usra, I'm looking at this waterfall. It looks amazing. Hey, thanks. Wow. I accidentally drew did a shape thing instead of freehanding, so that's why we have that block. Cool. But it had, I figured we'd run with it. I like what it says for uh, the industrialization and the commodification of individuals that are games taking place. They only see us as round squares. Um, I got mm-hmm. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, ben, uh, you gave us this beautiful addition of a port town. Uh, that's what like the Circuit City's roots are. It has a statue of a fish, a bangus. Um, a, uh, am I pronouncing that right? Bangos. Bangos. Uh, Bangos. And it's fried. And the statue itself is a tourist trap. And so we'll decide, we'll talk a little bit about who who haunts that trap um, as we get into our game a little bit more. Um, Erica, you're up next. Or do you have something? Do you, if you got it, hit me with it, baby. I have, I have an idea that's completely unrelated to my great fish idea. <laughs> well, you know what? After we go okay, through, I'll, I'll, lock it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll ask for additions at the end. Uh, oh, I wanna hear what it is. <laughs> we, hey, everyone, no. goes, everyone gets one <laughs> and then we'll, go, we'll get extras, all right? We gotta be fair. Okay. Erica, hit us with your idea. Okay, stop me if this is too much. But I want, <laughs> um, I want like every man-made surface of this decaying city to be like, um, sort of like it can become like a screen for advertisements, but they're all old and like they're just, the system is decayed and like really it's just like throwing up old ads all the time, but it like reflects like the emotional state of the city itself. And so it's like not even like, run anymore it's like been it's uh, like a virus has corrupted it now so it doesn't even like and it'll be like yeah if the like if the city is feeling like nostalgic or something it'll be like some like old bank commercial with like a father and son throwing a baseball on christmas it does it's like own like like kind of vibe yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. hell yeah Yeah. i love that throw it throws up throwing up old ads in line with the city's emotion Mm -hmm. which is also very cool Mm. um Hell yeah. You hear that Ben my idea was cool. I thought it was cool, Erica. Great job. Okay, thank it's you. Good. Uh, idea was also cool. Everyone's ideas is cool. Um, by the way, hey, Ben, yeah. Erica, draw it. You guys oh. gotta you guys gotta add it to the that's that's the part of the game, guys. Uh Joan, hit us, what's your idea? Okay, so I'm thinking there's this very large cave that is on the outside of the town. Oh yeah. And we there's like this mythology where you have to visit it once a year Ooh. and and we don't know why we're visiting it but we're constantly going once a year to visit this cave yeah yeah, yeah. that that has been tradition has always been mm-hmm. um hell yeah i love that um please add your cave to the map um oh my god look at this fish Okay, never mind. It's ruined. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Harrison, wow. up next. Oops. I don't know okay. I so, Circuit City, um, it is covered uh, in smog. From You could smell the gasoline. Mm-hmm. Um, gas or oil is running out. So, we um, oil is a very, very uh, important resource. Right. Um, of- uh, a lot of people burn tires in the street uh, to keep the the cops from coming to get them, uh, like in Black Hawk Down. Um, <laughs> keep you could choke cops. if you're not wearing a gas mask. Another great '90s reference. Slash corp. Well, I guess the cops <laughs> are the corp in this world. Burn tires to keep the yeah. cop slash corp from seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd love it. And also, I would say like 
I think there's a reason why it's called Circuit City. To me, like, it's it's a circle. Like, it's sitting almost with the acid waterfall at the top. It, like, feeds into the actual city itself as it, like, there's multiple levels around it. But it, it, it like, it's in itself is its circle. Um, ooh, this is so... I've got, I've got such good ideas. Because then it could be, like, concentric levels leading down. Guys, Wednesday's going to be so much fun. Um, all right. Up next, we've got uh, Shu. Hit us with it. And Harrison, get to drawn, bud. Okay. I see um, vines everywhere. Like this city was, the jungle is trying to eat the city. And so um, there's just like vines everywhere and things are, especially on the outskirts, the rings of the city, um, you know, there's a lot more nature and things like that. And I feel like the city is constantly in battle with the environment around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of buildings like uh, a defunct John Barleycorn, for instance, that uh, have vines running all through it. If, if anybody's in Chicago, that was also a reference. <laughs> um, uh, there's like vines like covered in everything. And so it has this look of like a city that once held greatness, but is trying to be swallowed by the earth. I don't know how to, I'm gonna draw this. <laughs> I love this. Being once all greatness, but it's being consumed by the earth. Okay, well, I have a question about shoes. Yeah. Because I remember reading that there's no more nature. There is, is that, that wrong? That you're not wrong. That's like one of the a part of the like important role of the elementals is bringing back the natural world. Uh, a lot of that was kind of taken away. Um, kind of non-existent. So I do. We can incorporate it in a way that like the city itself is like devoid of it it's a hundred percent but like at the edges at the outskirts there are rumors and there's even pockets where it said that this greenery is returning so i like i think i think there's fun way that we can incorporate all the bits and pieces because once again the sorry shoot the purpose <laughs> oh, of the game no, that's no. exactly what i was thinking with you you, you totally say no, 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 that's exactly, exactly. What yeah i was, yeah, I was yeah, helping totally. you yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> thanks guys for the assist you guys uh, got it the no the purpose well the purpose of the game is to play to find out so like these can all exist and what reason as to why they're there or what interplay that they have with one another is where our story is going to thrive in. um so i i good question and worth remembering because that's going to help us contextualize this um, once we get into things. So, uh, Shu, you hit us with that great addition of these, like, um, Earth reclaiming the outside uh, edge of the city. Um, ben, you had another one. Does anyone else have any other visual elements that they wanted to add to think about um, the world that we're building? Mm. Could, the, could the vines be uh, poisonous vines? They could. They could oh, be. Yeah. They could have been infused with some of the acid. I like with, that with the with the acid oh, and the yeah. smoke. Yeah, I was thinking even before Masood said his awesome idea about a concentric circle city, a circuit city. <laughs> a circuit city. I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. maybe it's called the circuit city because it was a canal city, or there were like canals put in at some point. It's, it's a fishing town, yeah. right? Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a river going through, but now it's acid, and they call it circuit city because those circuits. Are water, filled are now acid yeah, crisscross yeah. the city. Hell yeah! Mm. Acid and smoke filled vines. We've got uh, circles. And then, confusingly, this city did have the first ever circus on this planet. Get out so of here! You get out of here! Get lady. get the fuck! <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. If you want to run with that, I will let no, you. No, no, no! I hate that idea. I... <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Uh, circles. Oh, that's good. I, Masood, you should have a lot of passerby walking around saying things like, no, they actually call it Circus City. You know, they actually call it Circus City. Or they call it the Circus like, City. Yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, art of vaudeville was actually born from here before it got transformed <laughs> at the elusive industrious institution, the Second City. Um, and that was a burn for all of us. Yeah, Anyone watching, that was a burn on all of us. <laughs> Um, uh, circles of river feeding um, into the overflow, all acid now. Cool. I'm going to read back what I have just so we can like keep track of things. Uh, so it's Circuit, circuit City. 
God damn it, Erica. Now I'm, I'm really, I'm really got to be careful. I like really <laughs> City. Circuit City. The, the major thing to be known about it is the acid waterfall at its center. Um, it's, it used oh, to be a port town from the rivers that were nearby that were like sort of uh, feeding into it. Um, there's a statue of a, a bungus fish that's still in uh, the town square. It's a bit of a tourist trap. Um, every man-made surface in the, in the city itself is a screen for advertisements. Um, but the technology has been so corrupted and it's so old that there's just like old reruns of ads. It's like that Geico commercial with the pig that goes, we. Um, it, it's, it, it's grating at this point, 1,500 years later. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it also evokes the emotions of the city in a really cool way. Uh, Joan added the incredible addition that there is a cave outside of the town, which is, which is, I'm going to talk about in a moment, but it's important because it's tradition once a year to visit this cave. Um, and the reason why I want to mention, um, why that's important is that leaving the city is a big deal. Like leaving the city is not safe. For you all it's easy for you all to like blend in and like sort of like exist in that hustle and bustle but like going out on this journey is dangerous in itself and i think that's like important as the world will build in the way the corp interacts with this um pilgrimage that used to be taking place um i truly feel that every time i go to the suburbs anyway so i feel like (laughs) for me emotionally Uh another sick sick burn for those of us in Chicago. Burn suburbs. Burn suburbs. Uh, <laughs> Harrison uh, brought the lovely uh, addition of, like, the circuit is actually now, the city itself is covered in smog. There's a lack of oil, um, and so there's even tires being burnt just to, like, keep the smog and uh, the corporation from seeing, which I think could be a cool interplay of, like, where those circles of smog exist as they rise to compete with the acid that falls down against them. Uh, and we've got um, up next from Shu the idea that vines are everywhere the jungle is trying to like eat the city from the outside as it sort of like creeps back um, because there aren't really much left of earth there's just a little bit that's starting to emerge um, and that is scary to the corporation that controls everything and commodifies and makes everything off of it Um City once held greatness, but is being consumed by the earth. And then finally, there are the rivers that flow into it that make this port town feed into the overflow, feed into the acid waterfall itself, and sort of drive in and build out um, the ambiance and air of our circuit city. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love that that stuff. It. It's really good. Uh, awesome. <laughs> cool. So that we've just built. Our um, city, the major elements. The like, also, also, y'all. Let's let's take a moment to appreciate the look at look at this artwork. Look at this amazing, oh, like, amazing creations. They got the acid waterfall. <laughs> could the not smog. figure out how to draw on this thing. Is this a, is this a harpoon? Is this a harpoon right here? <laughs> no, uh, I, I drew that by accident. <laughs> well, I like that it because right the, the fish is right here. Yeah, yeah. you have a I'm cave. Like a visual artist. You uh, know, I'm, I'm mostly you know. These you know, vines dialogue. are cool. These vines are cool. I like them. That's 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 pretty. This is like beautiful, beautiful work, y'all. Um, and this this is our city. This is Circuit City. Uh, <laughs> so the next thing that we're gonna do uh, as a unit is um, build the next major component, which is um, the troubles that plague us. Um, and so these are hmm. interesting. They asked for two to four. We now have um, roughly. So we have like seven visual elements so i want to keep it fair i'm gonna say let's have three troubles that plague us and since there's six of y'all playing i'd like y'all to pair off um and like uh like sort of like discuss it between yourself what might be the vibe um and let's just do it uh this way we'll have usher and ben erica and joan and then harrison and shu cool awesome uh, we had Usher and Ben go first last time. So let's actually go Shu and Harrison. What are some troubles that plague the city and plague you guys so they can be interconnected? Um, and so some of the things that are listed here are like con artists, 
the cruel masters of the uh, masters of the enslaved elementals that are still around um the dying technology encroaching powers from the outside false prophets hedonism um hollow ghosts that haunt people impending environmental disaster lack of physical and, pri and psychic privacy um so a lot of these things we kind of talk a little bit about like erica you mentioned uh, the lack of uh physical and psychic pri privacy a little bit by the constant ads and the placement mm -hmm. like everywhere you go you're constantly being bombarded by the city itself which i think is great so like some of these things might come up organically to what we've been talking about but like feel free to let yourself sit and wonder um i'll even mm -hmm. let you guys if you want to you know what i'll give it i'll give it some time i'm gonna play a little bit of music i'm gonna mute you all for um the chat they're just gonna watch you guys talk um it's difficult because you guys can't mute each other so you're just all gonna be commuting <laughs> with one another in, in the skype call uh but i'll play a little bit of music let you guys uh think about it and then we're gonna come back and um sort of think about some of the troubles that are plaguing our city does that work for you all sure mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you Chat, yep. thank you all for being so kind and patient as we build out this awesome world together. Oh, can uh, uh, one of y'all say something real fast? I just need to double check. Hello. That's Hello. the window. Nope, 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 okay, nope. and that's the last they're going to hear from you. <laughs> There's so much power. There's so much power, chat. Um, and it's really, it's it, sometimes it goes to my head. But then again, I know I'm a benevolent ruler. You know, I'm able to actually like use this for good. Um, <laughs> but also, y'all, if you haven't yet, please uh, submit into those giveaways that are over in the chat. There's all this information that's happening. Code Twenty Forty is a great organization, um, and once again, they're matching. Roll Twenty is matching dollar for dollar for your donations up to fifty thousand dollars. So please, um, it's a great cause, and just get in there. Um, if you're wondering what we're listening to right now, the band is North and Wells. Um, they're a band based in Chicago um, from some people that we know. Um, the illustrious John Love is a character in all of our lives in some capacity. Uh, and he's a part of this band. Uh, but yeah. I, uh, Carl, I did not say the last bit of media that moved me in the intros. And this might be a good time to talk about it. Um, the last bit of mo media that really moved me uh honestly i hate to say it i just got into what we do in the shadows like the tv show i like i knew it had been around for a while i knew it existed but i hadn't like really watched it sat down and like spent time with it and i like crushed both seasons it's so good um and i also like i love taika watiti so i like knew i was going to be a fan and i think maybe that's what i was like holding myself on. I was worried it wasn't going to be as good as everyone said. Um, and it was amazing. It was so delicious. Ugh. Guillermo is my favorite character. I can't talk about it because I think they the, the cast can still hear me. So I think it's making it difficult for them to discuss or they're taking care of it in some capacity. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely got to watch it. It's very good. I'm gonna give you all another minute. That's exactly how much left is in this song. Kosher by the North and Wells Band off the album Kosher. Do you know I did uh, radio in college? I think I mention it a lot on my streams, but I, I did do that. And so, <laughs> hey, thank you for subscribing. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I think I, I think it's, I know Desmoxis as well. Um, I do, I do know him. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> oh, thank you for watching from the UK. I did, I knew it was Joe. I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Joe. Hey, Nikki, hey, Joe, thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, it's awesome that you guys are hanging out. Uh, I appreciate you watching Bollock Bayan and enjoying this world that we're building together. Al, thanks for watching from the UK. You enjoy yourself. Get a good night's rest. All right. Okay. Children, are you ready? 
Are we ready to get back into this? Okay. Hot thumbs up around. You are unmuted. They can hear you all again. <laughs> all the trash talk about me, all the garbage that you were saying that is true, um, it can end, okay? <laughs> uh, awesome. Let's uh, talk about some of these troubles that are uh, plaguing the city. And I, I said that Usher and Ben, because they went first in the last round of questions, we're going to throw it to Harrison and Shu first. Harrison, Shu, what are, uh, what's a plague... What's a trouble? What's going on in Circuit City? Okay, so there's a bunch of false prophets, um, and there's so many cults, just like endless oh amounts of cults. Oh. Um, like, and they can worship all sorts of things. Like, uh, there's a bunch called the Balut Boys, and they yeah, worship the Balut. 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 Um, yeah. Which, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, that is a uh, South Asian delicacy of um, a bird fetus in the mm. egg. Um, and that's that's what we're talking about, like yeah. the level of false. Prophecy. Yeah, the Luke the boy. boys. The, there's a, the second coming of of uh, of like a Christ figure, yeah. um, and they're gonna hatch from an egg and come out. Um, but uh, some people want to eat the Balut boys, uh, so there's just warring cults. Um, yeah, there's like some cannibalism stuff. Right, there's right, people right. Who worship. Yeah, there's definitely people who worship fish called fish people, and sometimes fish they try people. to like steal the fish statue and like. <laughs> there's just too many cults, is what yeah. I'm talking about. I love. It this. sounds like uh, Masood. It would be good if there was a lot of NPCs walking around saying more like Sir Cult City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna hate me when I use that six weeks from now. Uh... <laughs> I think if there's like a hack comedian in the city, they'd make a joke like. Um... Yeah. Which a hack first, comedian? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hack, maybe like, which, which came first, the chicken or the god we're all going to worship when it comes from the chicken egg? <laughs> I like that. It's a false prophecy. Yeah. The Boulette Boys. Yeah. Uh, Balut, yeah. Balut, so yeah. Balut, 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 yeah. Like Balut, anything yeah. that you can Balut. imagine, there's like, Second coming there, of, there's a cult. There's a, they're they're yeah. cannibalists. And I like this because mm -hmm. it's like, the city itself, there's so many different parts of it. And so like these different cults and gangs control different sections. So like Ooh. different parts are gonna have like different uh, um, influence as you like move throughout the city. And oh, this is, mm, I love this the, super- The acid rain hits all though. Acid, acid rain, the, the acid, acid rain. I like that phrase. Well, the acid rain hits all. Yeah. And that, might, that might be something a cool NPC might say. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the acid rain hits all. Oh. Awesome. Um, well done. So, Joan, Erica. I love that. Yeah, that's, that's so delicioso. Hit us with the trouble that is also plaguing our city, our circuit city. Okay, so um, there is... Oh, oh, oh. No, go ahead. There's an acid river, of course, yes. but... With the Acid River, people are drawn to it. Mm. It's alluring. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. And like they could hear like whispers and voices coming from it. And it like draws people in, even though it's like very, very dangerous to touch the acid. River draws. There's also an acid cult. Cool. <laughs> and Ooh, yes. The river draws people in, it calls to them, it calls to them. And There's... so maybe there are like fences around the river in like certain parts of town where like they've decided to like try to put barriers up. And um, like maybe it only speaks to you like on like certain occasions. It's not, it's not like a constant thing, yeah. but like, like you might just like start hearing the pull and like mm. start wanting to wander off into the, into the acid. Are there like sirens around the acid or is it just the acid speaks to you? I think the acid itself is like a siren. Yeah. Okay. Itself is a siren. I love this because I think also there's like can be people like there's a community that like, I don't know, you know them because of the masks they wear because they all dunked their heads Ooh. in the acid. They all baptized Ooh. themselves when they joined it. So like you could like- That's some cult shit. You know what I mean? Like this this is gonna be real fun. There's a lot, I, I, I thank you for this gift, Erica. Very, mm, this your soul. Uh, <laughs> ben, and oh, Joan as well. Thank you for this lovely addition to our campaign. I am excited to see how it plays out. Asura Ben, hit us with what your suggestion is. So glad you asked. Um, <laughs> I were 
Uh, we had a bit of disagreement, but I think we're, we've come to an agreement, right, Esther? I think so. Okay, our big idea. Have you ever heard of like those dancing mobs from like history? Yeah, yeah, those flash the, ones. Flash mob? The flash. I'm not ones. talking about. I'm exactly. not talking about impractical jokers. I'm talking about <laughs> oh, yeah. in like actual this history, is... right? Is this a no, thing? Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yes, we were talking about actual history. It doesn't matter if it is or not. Like this is your idea. <laughs> like own it. Like say it with your whole chest. Okay, there's a, a virus. Your whole chest. <laughs> there's a virus <laughs> that uh, periodically uh, replagues the city that causes a dancing mania. Yes. Muscles spasming. And, like uh, mercury poisoning, cult. is that what you're also talking about? Also a dance cult. Yes, a dance cult. What's that? Erica? Like mercury poisoning? And the dancing uh, sure. cats? Right. Um, any, I don't know what that is. It has to do with fish. I thought you'd know about it. Oh my god. Well, I'm not the, I guess I've become the fish guy. Asura, why don't you tell the folks at home what the virus is made out of? What it's made out of? Well, it's. I know it's caused by nanobots. Ooh, <laughs> it's nanobots. Ooh. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so nanobots um, were programmed by this man who loves to dance. Um, and if you <laughs> get, um, I guess, pricked by one, then you have the dance fever. You get infected, you get the dance fever. He died like 600 years ago. Yeah, Wait, of course. No, Way more fun if he's possibly in the story. Oh, uh, well, hey, well, he, <laughs> maybe he died 600 years ago. We'll see. We'll see how it comes up. Yeah. yeah. The nanobots what I, are his. What I love life. about this, what I love about this is that someone's like well intentioned idea that's like maybe in their mind just delightful, like turns out to be like this horrible thing for most people. Like, I like that switch. Yeah. There's a dance cult and a nanobot cult now. I that, guess I guess that's yeah. oh well. There's so many cults. cults so far. So yeah. um, but I do like that being some of the major elements that are play like these dynamics as they um, try to get you all to either keep you away from the corp for their own selfish reasons and needs to use you to their own ends or to sell you out for their own benefit. Like there's a lot of direction that this can go in a fun way. Um, and also I just want to remember, we didn't, um, we added some notes, uh, I, I wrote them down. Um, there's false prophets, so many cults worship all sorts of things. The Boulette boys, um, the second coming from the hatched eggs um, and the ra acid rain hits all. There's fish people that are trying to steal the fish uh, statue that exists as well. Um, and Sir Cult City, is a phrase that a passerby might say in episode seven. Um, the river draws people in. It calls to them. There's a, even a river cult that bathes people in it. Um, the barriers are up to try to prevent them from getting ac access to these rivers. Um, but it's difficult because uh, at one point they used to be uh, water and would irrigate <laughs> across the city. Uh, but now it's just acid. Um, they, you might start hearing the pull and wander into the acid the acid itself is the siren and then there's a virus that periodically plagues the city it, it has resurgences um that causes dancing to amongst all erupt among all the people it's caused by nanobots made by a man i mean well it can be it might be a woman who knows uh who love to dance if you get infected the dance gets you um, and you're uh, caused to dance until, I'm going to add, you die. Um, the inventor might have died 600 years ago. Might have. Might still be dancing. Might still be dancing. Who knows? Uh, very cool. Does this feel uh, fun for y'all? Do you guys uh, are okay with these troubles that are plaguing our city? Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. Yes. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be moving into character creation. We're going to talk a little bit uh, and kind of build that all on stream for you all to join with us. Um, but hey, before we go, remember, these things are always true. It is unsafe outside of the city, and leaving it for long endangers each and every one of y'all. You're on the run. Unshackled elementos are considered dangerous, and you need regular old folks, humans as much as they need you so that that's like keep that in mind as we start building out our characters um and this is really fun because uh the way uh Bion works is it has um a few a set of play kits 
that you um, that comes with it. Uh, characters: the Tikbalang, the Duwata, the Saint, the Aswang, the Saint Elmo, the Duende. Um, our cast has spent some time with these playbooks and have sort of um, each identified one that adheres to their play style a little bit. Um, and so I'd love for us to go down the line and just describe a little bit um, uh, about each of the playbooks. I, I can add a little bit from my own notes, but I'd love for you all to talk about um, each sort of uh, idea that you have before I give you all time to then start um, doing the like real generation. Is that cool? Awesome. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go. There it is. The uncomfortable silence broke Erica <laughs> first. Yes. Um, but tell me I'm your favorite student. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, um, yes. So the, the, the uh, type that I'm drawn to is the saint. And so this is um, a I'll pull it type up right here. that um, kind of like has a connection to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. And um, there are like little gods uh, throughout the world that they can um, like see and communicate with. And um, that's like, yeah. that's super important to you. Cause like, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this. Each character, um, they have certain mechanics that are based on moves, either weak moves, neutral moves, or strong moves. And in order to do certain moves, you need tokens. Um, and those are earned by certain narrative choices. And one of the ways you can earn tokens is by activating other players' lures. Like the saint, your lure, what you're like calling narratively what you want to do as a guiding direction for you, is mm -hmm. um, someone, they want to ask you to call upon a little god. Like you go to them for a lot of your direction and like that is your relationship to this spiritual that you're definitely trying to like bring back and revive um the mm -hmm. cool thing about the saint that i also like uh because i was like doing a little bit of research from the book they're originally sent as missionaries fighting little gods and using them to manipulate the masses so like mm -hmm. you were kind of the like the uh saints were also the enslaved ones were like the mm -hmm. first line of monetization of magic or like you know what i mean they like they were using yeah. their power to influence at least by the court according to the history of the world so how i'm reading it is that like yeah. um i don't like necessarily speak for like any god or i'm not like yeah. a prophet yeah. so much as like i use like moral arguments to manipulate the masses exactly and they might feel a certain way because the wind shifts in mm -hmm. your direction or some way like the movement occurs within them from something um beyond just your words which i think is like super super rad um yeah and they the corp particularly uses them for mind control this is how they keep like the enslaved elementals not you the 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 people who are your same class who are being used by the corpse they use them basically for crowd control like it's like hey let's keep the sheep happy let's keep them sedated um as they go about our lives um but I'm really excited about this because, like, do you want to read the play to find out for uh, yeah. the saint? Because I think I like this one quite a bit. Okay, so under play to find out, there's three questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first is, what is the relationship between machine and faith, and what do humans believe in now? Uh, then, can you lead people to empower themselves, or will you take advantage of their trust? I'm going to take advantage of their trust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll empower some of no, them. No, 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 um, good. Uh, can you resist the temptation to become God? Probably not. Yeah, buddy, it's good. I like this quite a bit. Um, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so now that you've got that, I want you to feel free to start picking on your name, choosing your pronouns. Think about one of the cool things about this game is that you're going to design your human form, your integration with technology and how you are cybernetic and mystical together. Um, so think about that as you're um, designing your character. And then also think about your true form because mm -hmm. you're elemental. So like one of them, one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later is about um, a, like a spirit, particularly how they engage with folks. You also have your elemental form, your true form outside of your human body. And um, yeah. 
Okay, you got a Are question. we mostly in our elemental form or our human form? Mostly in your human form. The fact it would have to be something big, like big magic, for you to be in your elemental form, to basically give up your human form to do mm -hmm. that. Some some characters have easier abilities using that. Like uh, I think the Saint Elmo can um, like like kind of basically astral project using their spirit and interact that way. But there's like, um, most often than not, your human form is your main one. It might change from character to character, it, like depending on what they can affect. But yeah. Okay. Cool. So just think about that. Awesome. Um, who Wait, wants? So am I just building my stuff right now while everyone else is talking? It, I would love. Uh, just think about your name and your human form and your true form. We'll talk about okay. uh, the other sort of stuff as a group afterwards. Okay. Um, so cool. Uh, anyone want to go next? Throw it on the room. Uh, sure, I'll go next. Hell yeah, Ben. Ben, what were you thinking um, about playing? I am going to be playing Santelmo. Santelmo, perfect transition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, a little bit uh, like faith meets machine because, except this one is about death. Because mm -hmm. the Santelmo is the nightmare between death and human. So the way I read it in the uh, other document that we had was yeah. that Santelmo is like literally a ghost. Yeah. But it's more of, it's like more like the, uh, what's that thing in Greek mythology, the uh, the ferryman on the river Styx? Oh, uh, Karen? 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, Santelmo is a Karen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, but it's like, yeah. uh, I'll read this part. Yeah. Generations ago, humans despaired over death. You carry the remnants of that despair and human humanity's desire to reconnect to those lost to death. As a Santelmo, you can connect to these memories and access almost any information, even the ghost of wisdom left behind. What are you playing to find out, Ben? Read it for us. By God, I'm playing to find out what is the relationship between machine and death mm -hmm. and what can humans never forget? Can I bridge the gap between the dead and the living? Or will I choose a side? And what did the dead want from the living? So a little bit of like a spirit speaker. I like it. A, a medium of sorts. I think I yes. was, uh, from the playbook, I, I was reading a little bit about it. St. Elmo's are also really dupe because the corp originally used them as guides for humans as they're like encountering death. So I think that like what you were saying, like it originally happened under a, like a commoditization, commodification. Uh, capitalist intent. Yeah, yeah, you know, like someone bought someone uh, who was rich, like, hey, you're going to die peacefully because I made sure this guy is going to guide you. You're like, that's the ultimate, the ultimate luxury is a like a peaceful death. And I like really like, it's interesting like to think about how that sort of developed. Um, you guys are also technically like spirit hackers. Like that's what you do. Uh, you hack into the ghosts and memories of the dead and... You also have a spirit form. You can take on a role of a spirit yourself because um, you're actually more spirit than human as opposed to some of the other elementals that we're encountering. Um, and so I want you to think about your name, think about your form, think about your, your spirit form a little bit. Um, and if we, like, yeah, feel if uh, looking at the time, we might describe them, but if not, we'll save that for uh, Wednesday. Uh, up next, who wants to go? I'll go. Heck yeah, Harrison. Yeah. Okay, so the character I was drawn to was the Duende. Yeah. The uh, little, little builder elf. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so, hey, don't laugh. I'm pretty scary. I'll yeah. take you into my into my tree tree hole and um, scare I, you. I don't uh, so, want to know about your tree hole ever, okay? <laughs> very spacious once you're small, so I'll shrink you first. Uh <laughs> So, okay, uh, ge <laughs> generations ago, humans obsessed over material wealth. You carry out the remains of that greed and humanity's desire to build grand things of beauty and power. As a duende, you can create the most wonderful and terrible machines. So I'm playing to find out, like, what is the relationship between machine and creation, and how does that magic elevate and perfect? Uh, can I build something that will heal or rift? between elements and humans or would i create weapons of war and destruction 
Uh, and what does it mean to be a magical creator? It sounds worth... pretty powerful. I like it a lot. And I, I really powerful. like this like direction. I like the questions because I was also mm -hmm. like from the, the book, I found this out. Uh, the Duende are interesting because of their innate ability to create. Mm -hmm. Duende make um, like how does they created a technology to enslave the elementals because they are the creators. It could not have been done before the, so whoever like there had to have been a Duende that was the first one to turn to then sell out uh, his brother in, which I think is like super interesting for like the backstory to go into and build out this world a little bit. Uh, but, and within that, I think there's a level that Duende are also expected to secure and protect their creation so it's not like you just like make big things and forget about like these things are freaking precious to you what you're uh creating um because they're also you're a freaking inventor yeah. man you're making new shit like this stuff has never been seen before nanobots uh, nanobots, nanobots. <laughs> robots nanobots that, that are tiny i made that <laughs> you made that i made that heck yeah i uh, made that i'm <laughs> Awesome. So let's move on uh, to uh, who wants to go next? <laughs> I'll go next. Oh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Are you sure? Ask, yeah, Asra, go. There you go. Okay. Um, I want to be an Aswang. There you go. Yeah. Um, which, from what I understand, is something terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, it says generations ago, humans feared the dark and what stopped them. You carry the remnants of that fear. Humanity's desire to be consumed. As an Aswang, you can access these memories and use blood and despair as your weapon. Mm, very cool. What are you playing to find out? Hit us with it. I'm playing to find out what is the relationship between machine and horror? Mm -hmm. What are humans truly afraid of? Can you justify your murderous rage? Probably not. <laughs> or simply do what needs to be done. Will you turn more elementals into hum and humans into Aswang, or will you allow your kind to die out? So this is important, because I, I did a little reading about this. Um, the Aswang are predators, right? Like, they were the, like they harness the magic and the power of what was scary about the dark. Like, the initial, like, the first fear of the unknown is what drives them. Like, that's their energy source, almost. And um, they feed on flesh like you need you need it to to survive um mm. super deadly the corp basically uses aswang as trackers hunters assassins and infiltrators like these if you set a team of aswang after you you messed up like they they are coming to get you um here's the tough like tough part it is illegal for aswang to reproduce like they are because of their power and their like ability, like the corporation basically prevents them from having the any more than the required amount to keep their like troops stacked. Um, and so do you want to give do you want to bring more people to have the curse that you have is basically mm -hmm. the question that might be something that plagues you because with power comes great responsibility. Someone's uncle told them that um and so think about your true name think about your human form sit on that a little bit um and i'm gonna ask uh we've got joan and shu left shu you were hot in to get in the box box last time you want to go next and then joan yeah. good to close this out awesome perfect joan uh shu tell us a little bit about uh your uh, your character uh i was really drawn to the diwata yes um, and I'll read uh, the little thing. Um, Generations ago, the planet's elements became cruel, devastating the planet. You carry the purest form of these elements, fire, wind, water, and earth. As a Diwata, you can access these memories and command the elements and bend them to your own will, vision, and desire. Um, and uh, I'm playing to find out what is the relationship between machine and nature yeah. when the planet has become toxic? Can you control and channel your powers? Or will you be overwhelmed by the planet's rage? Can you protect others? Or are you dangerous? Dude, that, this one is so cool to me. I was like, you are part, it's like part avatar and part matrix. Because like these two things are like kind of combined like together. Uh, I was reading yeah. in the other book, it was really cool. It was like, they, you basically channel the core essence 
of the elements of each of them. But the corp uses you all as batteries. You most Duwada spend their lives barely conscious, hooked up to generators, like thousands of them. Um, so because of this, unchained Duwada, elemental your elemental that's not free, is more likely to cause collateral uh, collateral damage because you're untrained because most of your time has been spent in this like semi-conscious state just being a battery for uh the world to exist so I, i'm really excited to see how like that comes into play and, and exists in this world that we're building together um totally. hell yeah so um you guys are you're thinking about your names you're thinking about your true forms um i I want us to describe, I, I'm looking at the time, and I just want to be mindful of where we are and the fact that, unfortunately, we just can't stay here all night. There's going to be people behind us. So um, let's save the descriptions of our human forms and our true forms for Wednesday night. I love, uh, like, we can sort of move that for that evening. But I would like each of us to go um, to think about um, what you hope for to think about um, your bonds. These bonds are really important. Uh, basically, uh, this is the homework that I'm gonna give you all, is to really um, lock in the rest of your character creation. So um, finalize your human form, your true form. Write down what you hope for. Each character has something that's like driving them, like that's kind of like a purpose. So your lore will act in line with that, but this is like really like what you hope the rebirth of magic leads to. This is the thing that like you are striving to happen out of your personal mission. Um, bonds are really important. Bonds are who are the people that you are bound to, who are like they're humans that exist in this world that you are connected to. They're going to provide some of our most integral NPCs or non-player characters that we're going to interact with. Um, and this one is actually important. Um, figure out who those bonds are. And um, I'll talk a little bit off screen, but I'm going to have you guys email me that before Wednesday so we can like on Wednesday, jump in and like just start role playing um, after we describe our characters. Um, and then I want this one, I want to you all to sort of lock in and think about. And we're going to ask this question right now on stream. We're going to start with Us uh, Usra. And Usra, you wanted to be an Uswang. So I'm going to ask you this question um, from your sheet What connects us? Choose one and ask the person to the left of you which on the screen is Ben. So right. choose one of these two and mm -hmm. ask this question and Ben write down your answer. Or actually, if we okay. have if we have time, um, you can say them out loud. If everyone else, you, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. You're going to ask one and then ask a question to your left. So Shu, you're going to eventually ask a question to Usra. Harrison, you're going to ask one about Shu, Joan, uh, Harrison, yada, yada, yada. So, Usher, your first question, uh, you have two to choose from. You've forgiven me for something I can never make up for. How do I try to make it up to Ben's character? Or you've asked me to make you an Uswang like me, but I refused. Why did I? Why won't I ever make you one? So, which question do you think is more appropriate for uh, your relationship with Ben's PC? Um, but asking me to make him an Uswang. Awesome. But so, I, refuse. I like that. Hold on to that. Think about it. Think about your answer about what that interaction is like. Feel free for you all to like chat about it as well. And we can come together and discuss that a little bit more on Wednesday. Ben, I want you to hit, uh, let's ask Erica a question. And you're uh, sent Elmo again. There we go. Okay. I saved you from the brink of death, Erica. Why don't you owe me for it? So that, and that's for you to, that is literally for you to answer. Why doesn't, like you saved Erica's life, but they don't owe you. And why is that? So I want you to think about that and like come up with that and also discuss that with Erica so we can have that moving forward. Erica, hit me with some of this uh, priest, in uh, saint info, sorry. Mm -hmm. Who am I asking? You are gonna be asking Joan. Okay, Joan, you knew me. Not an element. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's Joan's character? Um, no, we didn't get Joan's class this week. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. so sorry, oh Joan. I'm so sorry. No, we're serious. 
I'm so sorry, no, Joan. It's okay. No, it's not. We're on a please. tight schedule. We're on a tight schedule. I was looking at things. Joan, please hit me with the final character. Okay, I'm gonna make it quick, guys. No, 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 no. Take your time. I'll cut my but my closing. I'm gonna be a shape shifting, shamanic, powerful guy who is also into high risk manual labor, and I. Um, and Tick I, yeah. Balong. Yeah. <laughs> Tick Balong. And I turn into animals. I'm in. I'm a spirit guide, spirit realm, magic slash robotic person. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing to find out what is the relationship between machine and animal mm -hmm. when no one li living remembers animals. And apparently I could take human form and animal form or anthropomorphic, so. Yeah, no, I really like this because like the Tikbalung are super interesting because they're they're treated as the most expendable in some ways because of the raw output that they can do. Like all the high risk labor, the manual sort of work goes to the tikbalong that they need to have happen. They're the bodyguards, they're the muscle, they're the laborers, they're can shape shift into extinct animals now. Um, and the way that they do that, which I think is very cool, they download shamanic protocols to take the form of an anthropomorphic animal. So basically, um, you can find as a character if you access the re you can access the remains of the spirit realm. Uh, sorry, the access the remains of the internet through the spirit realm because magic and technology are interconnected, and through it you can download and learn new animal like sort of shapes to take on and sort of like take on that identity, which I think adds a lot of modular ability and like. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like there might be, like, a crucial moment where you turn into a fish. Oh! oh! Fascinating. <laughs> but don't throw that fish in that acid. Let's not do that now. <laughs> <laughs> that fish can survive. <laughs> uh, awesome. So, uh, I ask Joan the question yeah. now, right? Yes, please feel free to ask Joan your question. And think about okay, the answer. Joan. Mm -hmm. You knew me before I became a saint. What was I, and why is it our secret to never tell? So, so feel we... free to think about that. Private message each other off Discord about me and that question. Um, and, <laughs> and then, Joan, uh, you're up next. Ask Harrison one of the two questions from What Connects Us? Okay. You're the only one who sees my original form. What does it look like and why is it our secret? Ooh, cause you're a, you're a shapeshifter. So you, yeah, 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 I like that a lot. Very cool. Think about that thing. And now you have another identity to also think about. What does your original form Ooh. look like? Uh, once again, that's your homework. Feel free to chat it out. Um, and then Harrison, please tell us a little bit about uh, the question you want to ask Shu. You destroyed my uh -oh. greatest creation. Why did you do it? We... And why, why am I grateful to you? Okay. All right. And then I ask Asra? Yes, you ask Asra. Cool. Full circle. You've seen me unleash my full power. What precious thing of yours did I destroy? Hmm. And yours was again the Dewata? I was the Dewata. Yep. Yes, cool. Just pulling that up for chat for folks to also see. Um, heck yeah. So we got those questions. We got them all squared away. Well done, y'all. There's actually, um, I really wanted to get through that because there is um, a few last setting elements that we need to set for our world. And I just wanted to make sure that we had a top of it. So um, we're gonna have to get through this as quick as we can. Um, oh, first and foremost, just so we all know, um, here's the way the game works. The entirety of our um, narrative is gonna be based on two timelines, basically two metrics, whether or not we move towards homecoming or whether or not we move towards our reckoning. Um, and with it, they basically also allow us to narrate our epilogue accordingly, depending on how it goes. So after a session or after a, a narrative bit that we encounter, I'm going to ask you, do we feel like we move towards homecoming or reckoning? 
And it, really, we have to be honest because that's the way that the game works. Um, if we uh, mark a box towards capture, for, so we have one that's from on the one to capture and another one that's from fading to reborn. If you mark one towards capture, we have to pay a terrible price. A bond is sacrificed. A hope is shattered. There's like real like deep thing. Like either you lose someone close to you or something deep down that you've been holding on to cannot happen anymore. And how do you deal with that? Um, one of us is reshackled. Someone gets re-enslaved. And if that happens, if we feel like that is narratively the right choice to make, we'll work on building a new character for that person. Like no one's going to like try to like boot you off the island. That's not happening here. Um, uh, though we'll try with Harrison, am I right? Um, uh, no. No, it's me. It's me. I'm the one who gets booted off. Uh, and then the last one is one of us weakens. So we lose access to one of our forms of elemental magic. So basically, like, you, lo- you, you don't have as much control or much access. Like, you and I will discuss what that looks like. Um, if we move towards... Um, captured and the fifth box is marked we're going to answer these three questions as a group what terrible price does circuit city pay when we are recaptured (laughs) which one of us which one of y'all escaped and build a rebellion and which one of you is secretly a traitor all along erica um and just so just so we can think about if we get to that point um the other option is our homecoming and this we move between uh, our magic fading and our magic being reborn. And so if we mark towards reborn, here's some of the benefits that happen for us. One of us is revitalized. A, a new bond is formed. A new hope is realized. So you get a new driving goal that inspires you, that invigorates you. You encounter someone new in the world that is proven pivotal and that you can then utilize for narrative growth and development. So like it works in both ways there. Um, two, you choose to free an enslaved. And they join our cause. You get another powered elemental to join your group um, that you all sort of discuss what it's like. And the GM, uh, myself and you, will discuss and design um, something that feels right for our story. And then finally, one of us strengthens. We temporarily gain access to one form of elemental magic from another playbook. So basically, for a limited period of time, you can do something even more than what you previously... Like, even though you were never a shapeshifter, you weren't a thick balang, somehow as a ghost in your uh form you gained the ability to now shapeshift and interact with different technology and corpses in a different manner um you know like like it really gives us a lot of choice and uh options if we make it to reborn these are the three questions we're going to answer what bright and shining future awaits the city which one of us runs away and helps rebuild the corp (laughs) erica um and how are our hopes realized um and i i really like uh these sort of options for us to like pivot towards it, most often these will um i will hold on to these i will keep track of these decisions i'll discuss it with you when it feels narratively relevant but for now um this is just going to be basically my scorekeeping method um and speaking of scorekeeping there's one other Uh, piece of element that we need to discuss and those are the setting elements now this is the last major thing about our world um that are gonna that's gonna come up um and so there are six setting elements and there's six of you all so i want each of you um we're just gonna go down the line and work our way through this and once again because i put us around the spot last time i'm gonna start from shu um and can you read us uh so here are uh actually you're gonna read a question out loud we're gonna this is either we um answer as a group or we can decide that's going to be a motivation for our narrative that's going to be something we're going to like look to find out um and then you're going to circle two desires um and yeah that's that that's going to be the direction so um first hit us the questions to answer as a group feel free to read these and pick one that you want us to either answer right now or uh, for us to answer offline or us to answer as we figure out. Okay, so I'm on like the setting elements like one, two, or three, and I can ask any of those questions or like- I want you to ask from the enslaved, from setting elements one. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um... Okay. 
why wouldn't our fellow elementals run away with us? Ooh. And this is good because this is one that um, will set the stage of where you all land, of like where our story begins as to like why you guys are here and why folks aren't. Um, I, I'm going to say let's play to find out on this one. I want to see. I want to role play this. I want to. I want to like see what this looks like for Wednesday. This seems really dope. Um, so let's. I'm gonna write this down because I promised I would write this down. Um, and we are going to play to find out uh, why wouldn't our other elementals run away with us. Mechanical Hell yeah. Keyboard. Say what? <laughs> is it a mechanical keyboard? Yeah, it is a mechanical keyboard. I'm sure it's obnoxious. <laughs> uh, Hell yeah. Um, there is a mechanical keyboard cult also. There is, of course there is. Yeah. Of course there is. Yeah. Uh, Harrison. It's just like a multi-level marketing yeah. group. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's actually yeah, four yeah. into one. Yeah. What are uh, two desires from the enslaved? Uh, no, actually, no, sorry, this is still shoot. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Oh, no. Haha. -ha. Um, <laughs> so I get okay. to choose two desires? Yeah. Two desires for the enslaved. These, like, the, the, so you're basically describing how pockets and groups of our world are going to interact. So for the enslaved elementals, the ones who aren't free, the ones who are still being used, what are two of their desires that you feel are important? Justice and vengeance. Hell yeah. How those align and how those prove detrimental to one another. Let's say that. Justice and uh, vengeance. vengeance. Thank you. Um, heck yeah. And then the something to focus on. I'm going to like give this for you homework to fill out. Um, a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about the enslaved. Let's think about how they are, and like, um, as you're reading through this, give me a little more meat um, as we build that out. Um, yeah, hell yeah. Up next, let's hear it from Harrison. Let's talk about the court. So our major uh, enemy, our major. So you've got the enslaved on one end, and you have the corporation yeah. on the other. Um, I'm gonna take this offline. We got. We, we have to. I will actually. I'm going to do this. I'm going to name our corporation. I'm going to find a, find a right name for it. Because if I give it to you all, it's going to be something silly and not scary. Oh, cool. And but so... Really yeah. Bought Circuit City. So, yeah. <laughs> it's Radio Shack, obviously. It's Radio Shack. No! The Shack's <laughs> after us! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with that. Uh, but, Harrison, um, pick a question yeah. to answer uh, for us to either answer right now as a group or to an play to find out. Um, and uh, circle two desires. Pick two desires hmm. for us. Um, who's in charge? Who's in charge? I like. No one really knows who runs the corp, do they? No, nobody let's, knows. Let's find um, out. Okay. Yeah. Or unless you all and have the, an ideas. There's a lot of false prophets, so we really don't know who's in charge. We don't uh, know. Yeah. yeah. But there's probably the a, a corporate board involved. For sure. There's like the public yeah. CEO, there's a spokesperson, but yeah. who actually runs the corp? Yeah. No one knows. I like that. Who's in charge of the corp? Let's yeah. play to fucking find yeah. out. I like that. Yeah. Um, and people. Yeah. give me a, what are the yeah. two desires of the corp? Oh, hmm. Immortality. Hell yeah. And uh, a means to making elementals obsolete. Hell yeah. Fuck Immortality us. and making <laughs> elementals obsolete. Heck yeah. Put that for the corp. All right. And then... Joan, we're going to move on to you next, and we're moving on to the Setting Elements 2 handout. Um, and I want to ask you, so here are the two, uh, uh, you and Eric are going to be answering about um, our magic and our fading. I would like you to talk about our magic. What is a question that you want us to either answer as a group now or one to play to find out? 
and by now we can talk about it offline um but definitely something to like discuss okay um what are the ma laws of magic if any ah i like that question a lot like y'all have been enslaved for most of your existence this is the first time you're free and actually in charge of your magic for your own what does it look like like what are your limits i like that a lot um so let's do magic and it's what are our limits if any at all and then hit me with two desires from the magic okay um let's see to be unshackled and true balance true balance heck yeah awesome um erica you're gonna be up next talk to us about our fading um okay. what are we playing to find out what are we learning hit us with that. um the question is why do the elementals have to fade what took away their immortality what lost immortality because you all used to be uh, the stories of the in elementals were that you guys were immortal you were you could live forever right mm -hmm. immortality how um yes and why do you have to fade you have to fade awesome and then um what are the two desires i'm gonna say peaceful oblivion and fiery apocalypse So we win no matter what. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> but I like that. Like the the magic is trying to reset itself, and either mm -hmm. it's resetting itself into a into nothingness where nothing happens, or it's freaking chaos and everything erupts. And you all are trying to be on the other side for magic and bring about this restoration in a peaceful method, not that's causing it, it, that there can be a middle path. It doesn't have to be one or the other, um, which I think is very cool. Uh, ben, we're moving our way for you and Usra to our last handout for today, Setting Elements 3. And I want you to talk about the heart of their city. Usra, I would like you to think about our allies. Um, what is a question, Ben, about, um, as a group, you want us to play to find out or for us to answer um, about the heart of the city? Well, let me explain this first of all. The heart of the city is sentient, folks. The city... <laughs> can think and it grows in power. Um, so let me ask you this. Here's a quick cue quick mm -hmm. uh, group. Yeah. Um, why is directly interfacing with the heart of the city dangerous? Can't yes. do it. Why? Facing the city dangerous Ooh, let's I, I actually think we should answer this one now i think i think this is cool we can talk about it in the structure and like the uh, like the idea of like the heart of the city um is it at the is it at the center of the city is it like truly at its center and therefore it's dangerous because of the acid because of everything that's there because also the center is at now at the bottom of it and therefore you have to go to the bottom of circuit city to reach it um what do y'all think Basement. The basement it's it's, the it's dark the, i don't know where the light switch is it's dark down there there's a, there's a cave right there is a cave joan mentioned there's a cave yeah what if interfacing with the heart of the city is uh difficult because the heart is in pain its blood is the acid that runs through the streets it's been wounded Ooh. circuit city is out. wounded and will yes. lash yeah. out deep is dangerous just like me because <laughs> it's wounded and is lashing out hell yeah i'm i'm gonna have some fun Shut with up, that Harrison. uh hit us with the they desires what are, what are the two desires this, the heart of the city wants oh right um to connect every living being mm -hmm. and love everlasting Oh, oh, you big softy. Lame. Okay. And then, heck yeah. <laughs> Ostra, hit us about our allies. 
What kind of dangers do our allies face? Dangers do our allies face? Do you all... This one I want you to think about as you think about your bonds, because I think some of them you might know beforehand, but some of them you might we might find out and discover together. And we can talk and, and see what that looks like. But I, I like this question for you. This one is also a chew on um, for you all. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Um, and then hit us with two desires. What are our allies, our, our humans, our muggle friends? What, are, what do they want? They want galaxy-wide rebellion. Desires, okay. Galaxy-wide rebellion. And they want to become the new masters. Want to be the new masters. I yeah. love it. Heck yeah, y'all. Um, this is so exciting. I can't wait. Um, if you all want to find out more and see us play the game now, uh, tune in on Wednesday nights uh, over here on the Roll20 channel. Um, we'll be playing from uh, 7 p.m. Central to 10 p.m. Central, um, and that is in Pacific time. 5 p.m. Pacific to 8 p.m. Pacific. I did it. I did it right. Please be proud of me because I've, I've been messing up time zones forever. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to, while we close ourselves out, I do want to thank... Um, everyone um at roll 20 i want to thank everyone um from sir friday night for joining us here um thank all of you all for coming out and spending time out of your evening um to watch us do the session zero of bollock bions uh returning from home a reminder um please please donate to the code 2040 charity once again roll 20 is matching 100 percent of donations uh, to this wonderful cause um go get yourself a t-shirt go buy yourself a troilus antioch token and for your own uh, uh D game on roll 20 um yeah there's a lot of awesome things happening norse foundry is doing a limited edition roll 20 uh d20s 20 percent of the proceeds go to uh code 2040 mm-hmm. um and donation milestones are going to be giving away a bundle of roll 20 goodness there's so much stuff happening all weekend um so once again huge shout out to roll 20 um and before uh, we go, I'd love uh, everyone quick. Let's go around the circle. Say who you are. Say where people can find you if you want them to find you. Um, yeah, let's uh, start off with Joan. Sorry, I was just chatting to everyone. Um, <laughs> this is Joan. You can find me on Instagram, St. Joan. I don't post that much, so you could come along and lurk with me online. Heck yeah. Shoo, up next. Uh, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at hello there shoe h e l l o t h e r e x u, um, and I mostly post uh, really dumb shit on my Twitter and my food on my Instagram. Hell yeah! And sometimes your little pupper who is in your hands. Uh, Her name is Coraline. Oh, she's a baby. Uh, Asura, please tell us about yourself and where people can find your wittiness. Oh yeah, you can find my wittiness on Twitter and sometimes Instagram. Um, it's at Kanye, K-H-A-N-Y-E, underscore, underscore, West. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it's on also your profile on the Twitch so people can see it as well. Oh, that is how you spell it. Go find it. Yep. Speaking That's of people who sometimes mess up the spellings of our friends, Ben, tell us uh, how and where people can find you online. Hello, folks. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Cummings. That's B E N C U M I N G S. Only one M, folks. Uh, and if you want to add me on Steam or Discord or Battle.net, you need to become my friend. <laughs> Just leave it at that. That's good. That's, oh. And that's how you should be on the internet. <laughs> Erica? Done. Yeah, I'm Erica Geyser. You can find me on Instagram mostly, Bebica says. Is it here? Yeah, it's point? there. It's underneath there. That, so that's oh. that's for Erica's Instagram. So for folks know. Uh, and Harrison. Hey, uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Harrison's Happening. And uh, if you play PlayStation, uh, come add me, Monkey Mud. Heck yeah. Wait, and so do you? Sp- I might have spelled it wrong because I was searching for Harris ha- Harrison Happening on Twitter. And I could not find. Mm-hmm. Is it Harrison's oh, jump rope ha- number two? Jump. That's jump rope number. Yeah. 
are you the second jump rope? Jump rope I number two. I was in two. Uh, the movie Jump Rope number two. Uh, j- and Jump In with Corbin Blue, I was jump rope number two. All right, this bit is... I'll get, I'll, get the, I'll get the oh, actual... That's I'll That's why the actual... you look so familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'll get your actual honest information later for folks. Also, we'll Johnny, start playing the other on tsunami. Wednesday. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're done. You're done. Hey, y'all. And I'm Masood Uh You can catch me on uh, Tuesday nights with Mythic Odysseys of Theros, sponsored by Roll20, with Rivals of Waterdeep on Sundays. And I'm going to be here all weekend at Roll20Con doing another show tomorrow. And again, on uh, doing Star Trek RPG adventure with Rivals of Waterdeep and then playing, uh, what is that game? Alien Isolation RPG with uh, my indoor recess kids. Uh, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a fun time. Um, but thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Um, and thank you all so much for all who donated. Come check us out on Wednesday nights. We'd love to have you. It's going to be a blast. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. 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 <laughs>